What's up guys? It's been a while. But yeah, it's been quite a while since I managed to do any videos. Um, every time I think I'm going to get some time to do it, well, I don't. And that sucks. But thanks to you lot, because you've still been watching all the videos that I've done previously, although 99% of you aren't subscribed. Hit that button. Okay, so I'm going to uh, today revisit something that I've been meaning to revisit for quite a while. Uh, which is also one of my most popular videos, overclocking an Optiplex. And I've picked up an Optiplex 780 this time instead of the 755 because I think this is going to give us some better results. And I've also got two CPUs to test this out with. So I've got the fantastic Q9550 and the even less fantastic Q6600. Uh, out of these two with the 780, I think if anything's going to work, the Q6600 is going to work. But with this having a higher FSB than the 755 that I used in the last video, uh, the Q9550 may work as well. I'm fairly sure there is somewhere on the internet that would already tell me this, but that's no fun. So we're going to try this set together and see if it works today. So at the moment, I'm running with a Pentium D in this thing. Uh, which sucks really, really bad. I'm not even going to show you how poorly this thing performs. It's basically waiting to go in the bin. Um, and we're going to strip that out in a moment and we're going to get some baseline results first with the Q6600 and then with the Q9550 and then we're going to try the tape mods to see if it works to see if we can push the frequencies up. Alright guys, so let's have a uh, look inside the Optiplex 780 and get that old CPU stripped out. And uh, don't worry, that's my other PC on the screen. I'm not stupid enough to have left this one switched on. Okay, so I do like the 780s because they come apart really quite nicely. Okay, so I really like the 780s because they can come apart really quite nicely. Unless it's me taking it apart. So I have to remove half of the stuff in here to actually get to the uh, cooler. This, this thing is absolutely filthy by the way. I picked this thing up for £20, uh, which isn't the worst deal in the world actually. It's pretty decent for a full working PC. Uh, obviously I've added the SSD later. Uh, but I'm pretty sure this thing has been sitting in a warehouse somewhere because it's still pretty black on the inside even after I've cleaned it out. Okay, so let's get this uh, Core 2 GI out of here. By which of course I mean Pentium D. Okay. Out with the old. And let's try out the Q9550 first, shall we? The Q9550 is installed. Let's uh, get that SSD hook back up in there and fire this baby up. I've run Cinebench R15 and we have got a fantastic multi-core score of 306 which uh, is well behind the single core score of any modern processor. So not particularly impressive, but still, a major uplift from what we had in here before. But that's not really the point, is it? Let's see if we can improve that with a little bit of tape. All right, so we're gonna strip the Q9550 back out of here. We're going to apply the little bit of tape over the pins, which I should be showing you sometime around about now. And we're going to pop this back in and hopefully have an overclocked Q9550. Right, so as you can see, the idea here is that we're covering over two pins right here at this edge of the CPU. So let's give that a little go. Okay, 
it's far more difficult this time. I think my hands have got fat. So I've got my two pins covered over. Hopefully you can make that on the camera. Let's uh, see if this is going to work this time. All right, guys, moment of truth. Place your bets now. Do we have a non-functional jet engine or an overclock Q9550? have a non-functional jet engine. Oh, it's not even a jet engine. What have we got? We've got a complete fail. A complete and total fail. I have to admit that I'm somewhat disappointed. Well, we've still got the Q6600 to try out. And since we already know it's going to work regardless, let's just go straight for the tape mod with this one. Okay, let's try this baby again. Come on Q6600. Once again, do we have a functioning overclock CPU or a non-functioning jet engine sounding optiplex? No skipping ahead to cheat. Come on, I want comments. Okay, let's give it a go. Plot twist. The Q6600 didn't even work without the tape. I think I've been sold a dud. It looks like we're going to get to continue this video today and have another attempt with the Q6600. As you can see, the Optiplex is now on. And uh, the uh, what had happened uh, is, although I'd attempted to clean it, there was actually some sort of corrosion on the pins, which using my trusty razor blade, I uh, located and scratched off and I've tried it again and it's now firing up so that's fantastic uh, but it also means this video is going to get even longer so I need to get the BIOS reset up and make sure this is all working and why not let's get that base uh, frequency test with the Q6600 now that it's working and in place and then we'll try the tape mod one more time and see if we can get ourselves a 3 gigahertz Q6600 in an Optiplex 780. Fingers crossed. All right, so we've got the dizzyingly high multi-core score of 237 CB. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure even a modern Pentium or even Celeron could beat that with its single core score. So let's see how much we can improve things as we once again delve into the world of tape. All right, so we've once again applied a little bit of tape to the Q6600 and let's just go for this. Let's, come on. It's the one final attempt that we've got. I'm expecting good things this time. Well, based on all previous experience, I have absolutely no reason to expect said good things. Doesn't mean that I can't hope for them. We are booting. What are we going to have? I feel genuine excitement now, guys. Let's find out. What are we running at? 2.39 gigahertz. It's reporting exactly the same as it was before. But let's see how true that really is. 
Let's try running Cinebench and see if we've actually had an uplift in performance. Because if this thing is now capable of hitting 3 GHz, it may still be just reporting strangely. Alright, so there was absolutely zero uplift in the score. Uh, but there is a slight different variant that we can try out. I've done this covering just one pin on the CPU. Uh, but there is also a variant which could work where we cover another pin on the CPU. So let's give that a try as well and see if we can get this working. All right, so second piece of tape is now applied. Let's see if we can manage to boot this time. I feel like I'm trying to bring hope to all those people with Optiplex 780s that feel like they have no hope. Well, hopefully your hope will be hopeful. Let's hope. We're booting again. Task Manager is once again showing this at 2.39 gigahertz. All right, so I thought I may have given up a little bit prematurely and rebooted the system one final time and had a quick look at CPU-Z. And what we can see here is that I've got an Intel Core 2 Quad Q6600 running at 1333. And even Cinebench showed it up as 3 gigahertz. So we have actually had a success with the Optiplex 780, which is amazing. Uh, as for the uplift, we've got a considerable uplift over the original Q6600 score. And honestly, right now, I can't remember if that's better or worse than the score from the Q9550. So... I'll get that up to compare and we'll show it somewhere here. I have a feeling it's still slightly behind, but compared to what this was running at without some tape attached to it, that is one hell of an uplift. Um, so if you have got a Q6600 or you want a, a cheap, semi-capable machine for whatever sort of purposes you want it for, you can now make it faster using this. Officially confirmed for probably the five millionth time on the internet, but the first time here on Paul's PCs. And that is tape-tastic. Eh. Catch you next time.